So uh, what month are we in right now? September? Is it missions month as well? So if I'm up here speaking, most likely I'm going to talk about some missions. There's a chance of it. There's a pretty good chance of it. Um, yeah, we are in the middle of missions month, and our focus is on just about anything related to missions. Um, I, I would, would hope that, that your mind would be on that as well. You know, it could be your, your, the, the, the missionaries that, that we support through Faith Promise out on, on the field that are... Uh, ways away from home for long periods of time, away from their, their families, uh, or it could be the, the fact that, you know, we're, we're supporting even some of those that are indigenous to their countries, but they're doing amazing work. could be unreached people group that we read about on Joshua Project. If you don't know what that is, and you got a smartphone, get that app. It's pretty awesome. Um, could be your neighbor co-worker, family member, that's all missions right there. Or you could even be wondering, what role do I play in missions? What, what can I do? You know, I, I can't see myself as having a, uh, an evangelistic gift or that, I, you know, I'm definitely not feeling called to go uh, to Indonesia or Ethiopia for a long term to change my life. You might be surprised, though. So, Webster Dictionary would uh, define missions as an organized effort for the spread of religion in foreign lands. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that religion out as Christianity. Um, it 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 has to stay that that wide verse just for the secular world. But I'm gonna we're talking about Christianity here. We're not talking about any other uh, religion. So. It's the spread of Christianity in foreign lands. Now, foreign land could be uh, someplace that you're just not used to going. You know, it could be a completely different continent, or it could be literally right across the street in your neighbor's yard. I'm not used to going in that yard and talking to that person. You might be. That's not foreign lands, but you talk about foreign, foreign things to them. So it could be on, on that foreign lands. Um, Missions is not necessarily building a church or digging a well or feeding the hungry. Those tasks are really good, but if that's what you're planning on doing, just like coming in the church this morning, if that was your plan, I'm just going to go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my presence in the church. If you say, well, I'm going to go uh, to Mexico and, and I'm going to build a church. Well, as soon as you get there, you build that church. If you don't talk about Jesus, if you don't bring his light and go for for him then you're just going in a humanitarian effort it could be going to uh the wildfires out west or texas or florida and say you know what i'm gonna get in a boat and i'm gonna rescue people but if you do it just to just to do it your heart is you know not focused on jesus it's a great thing but it's humanitarian now the lord may be in that right in the middle of that and you not realize it. See, Jesus is in the, the heart of missions. Spreading the news of a just and loving God, the sacrifice and lordship of uh, Jesus the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit is what missions is about. Spreading that news. Telling others about that. About him. About the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is at the heart of missions. Colossians 1, 16, 17, it said, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So that's, that's everything. From the chair you're sitting on, the words you speak about him to the, the families that you touch. Everything is, is held together by him. And so you may be going out into this uh, uh, area that you're foreign to that you 
want to do a good deed and think, well, okay, Jesus, I, I, I'm, am I doing this for Jesus or not? But yet, even if you weren't, if that wasn't in your mind, then he's reveal that to you. He'll come, he's through that already, working through you. And he'll reveal that to you with the right heart. Your focus is on him. And you can accomplish amazing things. Jesus said that, that uh, we, we would do even more things, greater things than he did. I mean, is Jesus, he's a sinful man. Really? We're, I'm, I'm going to accomplish better things than him? Well, it's because him working through us. So Jesus is, is recognized for that. Um, I heard a story. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. I gotta, uh, I'm probably getting ahead of myself here. So, uh, so Jesus made a promise. In Acts 1.8, uh, just before he was taken up to heaven, before the eyes of the apostles, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So it was a promise. You will be. Underlined, you will be. So he promised, if he, if he said, you will be, then believe it to be true. So... I just want to, you know, touch on these areas. I, I've done this before, and I talked about missions before, but I want to touch on what we're talking about these areas are. Jerusalem. So this is within our own community. It's where you live. It, is, it, it, it would be your family. It would be your neighbors. It would be your coworkers. All those with, within your circle of influence, okay, that you may or may not have spoken to Jesus about, spoken to them about Jesus. Those are those are the easy ones. They could they se- they seem like you know they think well man that's you know uh, I I just soon go to another country and talk about Jesus to somebody I don't even know than talk to my brother about him because I'm he is a boy I tell you uh, he he does not want to hear about it he's told me he doesn't want to hear about it and and I just you know I I can't talk to him about it at all. No just just keep on just keep on let the Lord work in his heart. It's not up to you to do the work. It's, just, it's up to you, though, to speak the words. Uh, Judea. This would be within our own culture or region. So we're talking about Texas, Florida, out west, those kind of things. Um, here's where my story comes in at. There was a guy named John. I, I, I saw this on, on Facebook. Again, um, I like Facebook. I'm telling you, I, I really do. You, you, you get a lot of junk right there. Just block that stuff out and just scroll past it, whatever. But there's some really cool stuff on there. And so uh, the story was, it was a news broadcast of a guy named John who was, came from Kentucky. And he said, the Lord stirred with, among, you know, within his heart. Okay, so there's Jesus right there in the middle of it. Stirred within his heart. He drove, let me get this right, 18 hours? 18 hours because he had a burden in his heart from God to help somebody. And he had a big bass boat or a bass boat with a big motor on the back. And there's currents and all this other stuff going on in that area uh, in, in Houston, I believe it was. And so they weren't letting small boats in, but, he, you know, he, he had a bigger one, so he was able to rescue people. He rescued uh, a family that was um, on, on their roof. But he just had a, a, a burden on his heart to do this. And he said something that just uh, really struck me. He says... He came from a culture, and this, and, and, talking about Kentucky, but this is really everywhere. This described everywhere to me. He said, a culture that's changing from a time when we use things and love people to now loving things and using people. I just got a cold chill. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> it, it's so true, though. You know, we, uh, these, these catastrophes that have that have been happening lately and we see what have we seen with that well I, well I'll tell you what I've seen I've seen love I've seen people crossing barriers of uh, color 
of religion, of class, just to helping people. You see, you see a, a family there on a rooftop, and they're 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 in trouble. I mean, currents picking up. Small boats can't get in there. Need that big boat, big motor. Got five people in there. Got to have enough room for them somehow without the boat sinking. God leaves them there. What's he see? He sees people. He doesn't see. Oh well, that's a that's a shacker living in. I'm only saving people with big houses. No. He's like, man. Eh. Not quite sure about that person right there. Oh, there's another family there. You know, I'll just pass them up. I'll go to this one here. No, he says, I'm going to pick them up. Then I'm going to pick him up. <laughs> all, it's, it's happening all over the place. So these things, uh, you hear, why would God do that? Why would he let that happen? Because it brings out Jesus in every one of us. God created us all with a special purpose and a special gift. And we are called to use that gift for his purpose. And even though we think, okay, well, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a good, I don't think I'd be a pastor. I can't stand, stand up there in front of people and, and preach. I can't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't feel like that I, I really could be a missionary on the field. There were some guys that went down to a church earlier this week to help build. That was awesome. Chris, Thomas, Marty. Is there anybody else, Marty? Hmm? Bob? Bob, don't you? Thank you. Uh, thank God for all of you. That was, that was a mission trip. It really was. Well, you used your talents in whatever way you could just just to help help them out and that was that was awesome so even though you may not have a talent that that somebody may think well that's I, I don't think you use that for God you know mm. that's awesome to be able to do that so um, another thing this guy that John he talks about a, uh, he was driving when he was driving along he saw uh, these people barbecuing on the side of the road and what they were doing is they were feeding all the people who were rescuing the other ones. They didn't have a boat. Uh, they, they probably didn't have, you know, much of anything else, but they had a barbecue grill, and they had some barbecue sauce, and they had some charcoal, and they had meat. And other. So they were cooking for the people. He said, I was hungry. He said, there's no place open. You can't go to McDonald's. It's flooded out. <laughs> These people were just using what they had. And now they got... You know, recognition on national news. But more, more than anything else, they were doing it for the Lord. I truly feel that. And so God's all working in all these catastrophes and everything, and, and he's, he's uh, showing us, taking us back to who he created us to be. Oh, boy, I hit myself here. <laughs> all right, let's go to uh, Samaria. This would be uh, the outcasts and undesirables. Outcasts and undesirables. Let's see. So I just talked about those people that were on the roof. Well, you didn't, you know, outcasts or not, you went to them. You know, these could be the homeless people. These could be um, uh, somebody who's just different than you. Now, when I go someplace and I see people with like 14 tattoos on their, on their neck and that many piercings and big gauges and stuff in their ears, Got nothing wrong with that, but it makes me uncomfortable. I'm not calling them an outcast, they're just different than me. They may love the Lord with all their heart. But yet, in, in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's, that's just different. So an outcast, I say, is, is somebody who's different than me, so I'm going to throw this out to that person. An outcast might be the guy in the three-piece suit. Because they're different. The, the Samar Samarians were different than the Jews. A lot of them love the Lord. The, the, the term, the, the good Samaritan, is something that if you haven't heard it, uh, then you got deaf ears. I'm telling you, you've heard, you've heard that story, you hear about it, they talk about it on the news. 
Even in the secular world, they talk about the Good Samaritan. They may not even know what they're talking about, but the term is there. And so it would be uh, those that are different or an outcast. But the outcast isn't necessarily the, the complete downtrodden person. So God calls us to go to those people. Now, the ends of the earth. How about this? Uh, significant cultural differences. So we're t- we are talking about other countries here. We're talking about, like, somebody who's got way different beliefs than, or not beliefs, rather, way different uh, ways of, of doing things. They may dress different, look different, speak different. They're way different from us. I'm going to talk about, I can't... Uh, talk about that, that without talking about Howard Fultz. Howard Fultz is a founder of Ames. A little bit on him. In 85, he founded Ames to take the gospel where it had never been proclaimed. Since he started doing this in 1985, he's trained over 156,000 pastors and leaders worldwide, resulting in over 37,000 churches planted. 31.3 million people have heard the gospel. 2.2 million have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior are saved because of this man. Now, is he going out there and doing that by himself? No. He wouldn't have the strength. He wouldn't have the time. But what he does is he trains other people to do this. And that just multiplication right there. His his testimony is kind of of neat. Um, I can't say I get him to get exactly detailed word. But uh, when he was working for Teen Challenge, he started, he was flying over an unreached country. And his uh, companion that was with him, as they were flying over this land, looked down and said, all those people down there are never going to hear the gospel. Never going to get a chance to hear the gospel. It, something stirred among him. Something, something happened inside of him. He's like, oh my gosh, we need to do something about that. And Matthew twenty four fourteen just came to his mind. And this is the God... And this gospel, the kingdom, will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay, if we want the end to come, if we want to go and be with Jesus before our death, we want to be taken up. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. To be taken up in the air, still alive, and be with Jesus. Meet Jesus in the air. <laughs> I'm telling you, how awesome is that? Why well, would you say, no, I, no, I don't want that. I'll just stay down here. Uh-uh, you don't want to be down here. Raps comes, this is one place you do not want to be. <laughs> okay? Um, but, man, he got a hold of that right there, and he said, I've, I've got to do something about this. He said, I, so he set out to, to train others. He realized he couldn't do it himself, so he started training others to be able to, uh, he just equipped them and, and uh, take the gospel that's never been taken. He knew he couldn't do it for another reason because there's areas he can't get into. Because uh, it, it, either culturally they just won't let him in. He's a white guy, all right? So going into uh, some places, he's just going to get shot real quick. So he needed, needed to know, he knew he needed to train indigenous people to go into those areas. So next week, uh, next Saturday is our uh, missions festival. Excited about that. Going to announce the new trips. So that's kind of where this comes from. Now I'm ready to start my sermon. (laughs) So the the theme on this is called, set, go. Kind of like ready, set, go. Called, set, go. So I'm going to be talking about that. Called or chosen, I would uh, Add to that, in Ephesians 2.10, it said, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance to, <coughs> for us to do. Uh, I actually preached on Ephesians 2, I uh, believe it was last time. And so uh, when I was preparing this message and that came up, I was like, am I doubling up on what I'm doing? No, that's okay, because that goes along with this. He has, he has created us, and we are his workmanship. Okay, So... He wants to use us. He has given us a gift to use. So, um, 
think of yourself as a piece of art. Whether it be a sculpture, painting, whatever, a piece of art. It is created, you are created by God who is perfect. So if he created you, do you think he can create anything imperfect? No. Absolutely not. So you are created perfect. You are his, you are God's workmanship. And he created you in Christ Jesus to do good works. He can, he can work in you when you're not saved, but once you declare him as Lord and Savior, declare Jesus as Lord and Savior, man, God can really work in you. I mean, you allow that to happen, oh boy, hang on because it's going to be a wild ride. If you allow it, if you pursue him, if you pursue, God, what have you got for me? Just like coming in here, God, you got something for me today? What is it? I would challenge you, don't just do it on Sunday morning. Wake up. God, what have you got for me today? Before you even get out of bed, God, you got something for me today? Think about the heathens you work with. <laughs> Except for you, Marty. <laughs> you can love on them so much. Um, I, I think of stories of myself when, when, uh, that have happened to me. Somebody says, man, there's something different about you. And I don't do this for my glory. It's for God's glory. Amen? For God's glory. He said, there's something different about you. What is it? Immediately, if somebody asks you that, I hope they do. I hope at some point somebody says, man, there's something different about you. You are different. Well, you're different. Bruce, you're different. Greg, you're different. Something different about you. What is it? Be prepared to say it is Jesus Christ living in me. And then watch the world look on their face. They're going to smile real big because they've got Jesus too. Or they're going to be taken back. And there's an opportunity. Now, if they run, I'll give you another opportunity. But if their ears perk up, then they're ready. They want to hear that stuff. They want to hear about the Lord. They want to hear about your testimony. They want your story. So there's missions right there. You're essentially in the field by uh, just being you, by just expressing what the Lord has poured inside of you. And you know something that's really cool? So you're talking with this person. God is going to work in that person's life. But where's he going to go? Through you. What happens when God works through you? You get blessed too. You get lifted up. So you just get done talking to, to Billy Bob over here about the Lord. And man, I'm telling you, that's awesome. You're all filled up. Oh, there's another person. I'm going to go talk to them. i got to go over there. So you, you just get filled up. And, and, and by just by speaking the word of the Lord, you get energized. You get filled up. You, you're going to keep doing it. So why not do that? All right. Um, in John fifteen sixteen, it said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So this is the kind of fruit. And it, the fruit can multiply. I talked about fruit in another message. There's another verse there. I don't know how God's working here, but it's kind of tying stuff together that I can see. I don't know. But uh, that fruit can turn from that that one apple with a little bit of seeds in it can drop down and be an apple tree. All right? And that fruit is going to last and then continue to go on. So when, the, when we announce the trips, there might be one that God has created you for, for this time. And he's going to be calling you to that trip. Kind of scary, huh? 
you might have to go to a different part of the country. You might have to go to a different part of the world. It can be really scary. But there's faith. Talk about that in a minute. All right, set and prepare. The set part. Preparation part of the trip. All right, so we're, we're going to talk about spiritual preparation. Or spiritual preparation there is before that. Of course, prayer, most important part of your trip. Prayer is the most part, part of your life. You call yourself a Christian. How much do you pray? Pray every day. Do you pray for a meal? Do you pray continually? I said, Patrick, how can I pray continually? But just living living a life focused on him all the time. With God's eyes. Jesus' eyes. Seeing what he sees. Am I looking at this person as Samarian with Jesus' eyes? See protesters all over have been, you know, protesting whatever. Whatever. So you're like, well, those people, they kind of upset me a little bit. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them to to be touched by the Lord. People are hurting all over the place. They're all over this town. People are hurting. Jesus' eyes, you can see that. And, and, and my prayer is, is that your heart breaks for them enough to where you pray for them. And you could start right just in this town. Just praying for people. So through that prayer, you'll get the Lord's direction. Where to go. How to even prepare through that prayer. But he, God also may even be able to reveal areas of your life that you need to focus on. All right? I know I'm not perfect. Who's perfect in here? Raise your hand. Who's never sinned? No hands? So you all admit, you're all sinners. You're not perfect. So God's going to refine you. All right? I've said this before. I love this. I don't even remember where I heard it. But you're like that, that uh, piece of silver, the silversmith. The silversmith polishes that silver until he can see his reflection in it. Well, Jesus is polishing you until he can see his reflection in you. So there might be some areas of your life that even preparing for this trip that he might be able to reveal to you that you need to work on. It takes me to uh, Colossians 3, 12 through 13. Therefore, as God's chosen people talked about being chosen being called holy and dearly loved clothe yourself yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience so those are great things to clothe yourself with put that stuff on before you go out then he follows it up with bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have you may have uh, against one another forgive as the lord forgave you now i'm going to use this this forgiveness as an example of something the lord may need to work on you about Forgiveness is a huge thing that a lot of us have struggled with. It's forgiving somebody else. But seeing them with Jesus' eyes, that helps that. Forgiving people as God forgived you. Because I know I need forgiveness. Every day I need forgiveness because every day I sin. And I even pray, Lord, just reveal to me where the areas of my life that I need to ask forgiveness for. So, call to this trip. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Patience. All right, you've forgiven people. So, so on this trip, in this trip, the trip that uh, God might be calling you to, across the street, across the country, across the world. He's going to work on you in that trip. I have yet to meet 
any short-term missionary that said that they were sorry they went. And I could add that it was prepared in their heart in the right way to go. Every one of them said they got blessed more than they feel like they blessed somebody else. It talks about God working through you to others. That's what that is. It's God working through you. You're getting blessed. You're like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to try to go out and, and I'm, I'm not, I don't, not going to focus on me getting blessed at all. I'm going to try to, to out-bless God, essentially. I'm going to try to bless these people so much that, that, that they get the blessing and I don't. Wrong. It won't work. <laughs> God's going to bless you. You can't out-give out or out-bless God. Uh, and I, I tell you, I, I, I love the testimonies I heard this year. I do. Because God blessed those people. And if you were here, you heard any of those testimonies, uh, or if you've seen them on, on Facebook or YouTube or any of that stuff, why would you not want that? I'd just say, man, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to be blessed. <laughs> Does anybody wake up in the morning and say, I don't really feel like being blessed today. I want to have a, just a, just a day. No, they want to be, you want to be blessed. Everybody wants to be blessed. I mean, if, when, you're, when you're sick, you only bless with, to get well. When you're well, you want to be blessed to stay well. So, feel blessed. Feel blessed that you can even be here this morning. That you got out of bed, both feet are on the ground, and they moved. I know I do. Well, let's talk about practical ways. All right. In Luke 9, 1 through 3, verses 1 through 3, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Amen. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no extra money, no money, rather, really, no extra tunic. I mean, they're going out there with nothing but the shirt on their back. Uh, why would he have them do that? Build their faith. Build their faith. He wanted them to be dependent on the generosity of others that they were witnessing to. Telling them about Jesus. Now, none of these people have heard about Jesus before. They heard about God, hadn't heard the name Jesus. So they were going out and, and they wanted, they had to be completely dependent on not these people, though, the generous people, but God working through these people. Even though these people didn't realize God was working through them. But then later on, uh, in Luke 22, verses 35, 36, and Jesus asked them, When I sent you out without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. And he said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. If you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Well, this is a time that they're going to face opposition. So we wanted them to be prepared. Now, he had actually already prepared them spiritually before when he sent, sent the twelve out the first time. But in building up their faith, they, uh, he, he wanted to, to use the generosity of others. But now, they have to think practical. They have to have uh, money. They have to have a the clothes, and they have to have protection, the sword. They also have protection from the Lord. Now, you all should feel blessed because you know the whole story. These guys didn't know the whole story. So he's calling, calling you out, calling all of us out, that when we go, we need you to be prepared. We need to have a passport. We need to have the right kind of clothes. If you're in wet, if you're in wet climates, it's not telling you to take your Sunday shoes, your high heels, whatever. You take your gum boots, right, JJ? 
Need some gum boots. It's also then and also uh, finances. And to be physically fit. You're on the mission field. Chances are uh, you need to be physically able to do what God's calling you to do. He's given you a body. Your body's a temple. He wants you to be able to do his work. I love my wife. My wife is an amazing woman. She is more physically fit than I am. I'm going to tell you that right now. We started running, uh, going to David's ball game earlier this year. She said, we're going to walk one block, we're going to run one block. I said, okay. She looked at me like, are you serious? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can do this. 44 years old, I can do this. I'm telling you what, I was huffing. She looked at me laughing. Why are you breathing hard, honey? I'm not physically fit. I'm not. I'm not. Anyway. God wants you to be, be prepared to do all that stuff. Have everything set in order. Um, have our affairs set in order. Uh, you know, our uh, you don't you don't leave and leave your kids at home with a loaf of bread and some peanut butter and jelly and say, "Well, there you go. I'll be back in two weeks. Wish you the best of luck." No, no, you you make sure all that stuff's taken care of. I'm telling. So. Preparation. All through that. Finally, we reach the go part of it. You're actually, man. All right, you've you've uh, you've been called. You're set. You're prepared. Now you're going. This is exciting stuff. You are going. Mark sixteen fifteen. He said to them, "Go to into all the world and preach the good news to all creation." Stressing all creation. This means everybody. means taking care of all creation. If that, if that means uh, you're going out and that, and that donkey fell in that well, you're going to lift that donkey up. Say, Jesus wanted me to do this for you. Talking that donkey, all creation. No, not necessarily. <laughs> no, but, but preach to everybody God, God calls you to. Yeah, you have to be have discernment. If you're in a country that is hostile, you don't necessarily go on a street corner and start shouting Jesus at the top of your lungs. It'll get you arrested and shot. Possibly. So you use, use discernment. But yet, all creation here means all the entire world. What Howard Fultz is talking about. All those unreached people groups. And he's calling you specifically to go to every one of them. No, not any more than he called Howard, but he called Howard to enable others to do that, to train them. Well, he might be calling you to just this, to this area here, but that's all creation. It's talking about all of us called all creation. So this is where the rubber meets road. Faith. I told you we were going to talk about faith. We're talking about faith here. Even though you say, I... Still not wanting to go, still not sure. But just as Jesus told the disciples to go with nothing but the shirts on their back, that he's, and they did that, man, to have that kind of faith, that God's going to provide for you, that God's going to protect you, that God's going to do an amazing work in you, be excited about that and go in faith. So God's call, possibly calling you this year to go on a trip. You know what would be really cool? Is if every single person in the church went on a trip. I think a year's coming, that may, that may happen. I mean, you think about the fundraisers, you know, everybody's going to be funding everybody else's trip. If it's, that's church, you know. But how many believe God can provide for that, huh? Okay. The money's not the issue. It's you being called, you answering, yes, I will go, here I am, send me. And going in faith, knowing God will protect you, provide for you, and do an amazing work in you. Faith not used diminishes. This is my, my final point. When you play a game, who, 
Who likes playing games or has some kind of skill? Every hand ought to be up, for goodness sake. You know, whether it's, it's basketball you love playing in, in, in high school or uh, whether it's playing an instrument, anything. What happens when you don't do that stuff? It diminishes. Okay? So uh, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that Marty was a pretty good basketball player back in the day, but he probably can't play like he used to. <laughs> doesn't mean he doesn't have the heart for it. doesn't mean he doesn't have the mind for it. just means he doesn't have the physical body for it. But he also didn't, you know, he didn't practice it. It's okay. That's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I know you can. I know that. This is nothing against Marty. I'm just picking on him because he's, he's our pastor. All right? But he hasn't practiced for anything. Again, because he physically can't do it. So his skill diminishes to a point where he can just barely take me. Oh, oh Lord, what did I get myself into here? Anyway, uh, a few years ago, uh, we had a, at, at the Missions Festival, a, 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 nail in a, a, a nail in a board contest. I did not win. I lost. Because I got used to nailing with nail guns. God bless nail guns, amen? <laughs> I'm telling you what. But I couldn't. I was like, hit, hit, bend, hit, miss, bend. I look over, my daughter's getting in one of them. <laughs> like, what in the world? But anyway, so your faith is like that too. You don't use it, it's going to diminish. It's not going to stay the same. It's going to either grow or it's going to diminish. Is anybody here want their faith to diminish? No. Wouldn't you love for it to grow? So you've got to exercise that faith. And exercising that faith is using it, is stepping out in places and in areas that you don't feel comfortable with. It means praying for that co-worker, calling that family member up, going to that other country. Keep slipping that in there. And it's scary. It's going to be scary. But you've got God on your side. What else can you have on your side that's better than that? Nothing. So as we go into ministry time, uh, just one question. Where will God send you? Where will God send you? During this time, I want to um, I want you to just be open to God stirring within you, okay? And if you've got something you need prayer for, grab a brother or sister. Have them pray with you. Tell them, see, I think God's just stirring within me in this. God may work through them to you. He may have a word that they need to speak or he needs to speak through them to your heart. It might just be though you by yourself just asking God what he got for me. Where are you going to send me? What are you going to do with me? And if you don't know, you have to ask. You have to ask the Lord. If you have questions about what's going on and in, in the world or in your life or there's been a tragedy in your life and you just can't believe that God is doing this stuff have you asked him why? have you asked him what are you, what are you doing? what's going on? God give me, give me just show me chances are he's not going to show you in the way you think he should it's not going to be a big billboard saying Patrick do this here's what you need to do Here's how it's going to turn out. But he's going to answer your prayer. So 
Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's wait. Most times it's a gentle whisper. So that you're quiet, just listen, be open. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for calling us, for creating us, for giving us gifts that we can use for you. For choosing us to be your children. Praise you, God. It is your glory, Lord. It is for your glory that all these things happen. All these catastrophes in our lives, all these trials, Lord, give us the courage to say, here I am, send me. To say, use me. To be open to your working in our lives. That we may glorify your name. And worship you. Thank you, Jesus.